Uh, a few days ago, um, the speaker that had been scheduled for this morning canceled on us uh, un unannounced. Yes, I said boo too. But, but immediately, uh, it, in fact, it took me only about three minutes of praying. Uh, the Lord reminded me we have board meeting. We have a board member in town that I thought would be an awesome speaker at the end of the semester. He is no stranger to ORU. I told him in the green room, I believe he has spoke at, uh, at uh, this university every year I've been here, in some years twice, this year it'll be twice. And he is a blessing to all of us. Uh, Many years ago, uh, I, I started a youth conference ministry in the denomination I was serving as youth ministries director. And one of the early speakers at our youth conference ministry was Dave Reaver. Dave was traveling at the time and doing a lot of speaking, wonderful man that had been injured in Vietnam and had an amazing story. And uh, we had a youth conference in Gatlinburg and he brought with him a young guy that played the saxophone and told a couple of jokes. And uh, I liked him. And so next conference, I didn't invite Dave back, but I invited the young guy back. And the young guy's not so young anymore, but uh, he, he blew the roof off multiple times in conferences that we did over the years. And I came to love him. He's a friend. He is a board of trustees member at ORU. He lives in Texas these days, if anybody else lives in Texas. Today he has with him his wife, Michelle. Michelle, we are delighted to have you. Would everybody get on their feet and welcome the indomitable, the indisputable, Reggie Debs. Oh, come on. Somebody say, all right, all right, all right. Give three people a high five and hold on. You can sit down if you're not a senior. All seniors stay standing. It's never too early to start a celebration. Let's celebrate our seniors right now. Awesome. You can sit down now. Y'all good. Are y'all ready? Let me start. If you are a senior, I need to let you know. I went back to school and I finished my, my I did my master's degree and I graduate May 5th. So if you're a senior, I know. I handed in my last paper this morning. For the rest of you, I ain't never going back to school. I'm done. I would say something, but it, it ain't going to work. I'm done. Let's start this. Uh, your last chapel before senior chapel. I was at the beginning of the year. Now I'm at the I should do this every year. I love ORU. Here's the title. All good Southern preachers title our sermons. So y'all ready? Here we go. Look at some, everybody just sniff twice. Just go. That's good, good, good. Do it again. Ready, go. Now look at your neighbor and say, what's that smell? <laughs> That's the title of my sermon. We got to do it one more time. Come on, sniff twice. Say, what's that smell? <laughs> if you got a Bible, you got to turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter two. Now here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read it, then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna explain it. I'm gonna be honest with you, since this is the last regular chapel, ain't nothing like doing chapel and getting done early. That's my goal. Because we need to party. I mean, come on. Hey, listen to me. What you don't understand, some of you, if you hang around here long enough, you're going to meet your lifelong friend. You're going to meet the ones who will be in your wedding. And you'll meet the ones who will carry your coffin. Me, I'll meet the 24 brothers that will carry my coffin. Because, 
kind of big, you know what I'm saying? And whoever you don't let them to carry it, because they were dancing over their head like this, because you're not carrying my coffin. <laughs> Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. Now a man from the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, I got to stop. Do y'all see that? It says that we, he was a fine child. If the Bible says you good looking, then you good looking, all right? The Bible would never say that about me. Let's just keep going, all right? He was a fine child. So she hid him for three months, verse three. But when she could not hide him no longer, well, the Bible would say that about me because I'll get so big you can't hide me no more. <laughs> she got a papyrus basket with him and she coated it with tar and pitch and she placed the child in the basket and put him in the reeves along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendant was walking along the riverbank and saw the basket among the reeds and she sent her female slave to get it. May God bless the reading of his word. Now for me to explain this to you, we got to back up. There was a man named Pharaoh. He heard that there was going to be a child who would grow up and mess everything up. So he decided if there's no boy to become a man, then they can't mess up. So if it was a boy under the age of two, they were supposed to throw him in the Nile River. Now babies can't swim, but they don't need to worry about swimming. The Nile River's a messed up place. Do not go swimming in the Nile. It's home of some of the nastiest floating creatures on the face of the planet Earth. They got these things called crocodiles. It's like an alligator with an attitude, like an alligator needs an attitude. They got piranhas. They're good until they open their mouth. Then you're in trouble, all right? So these babies were thrown into the river if they were a boy and they were eaten and consumed before they could even drown. But this woman hid her baby as long as she could. Then she had to do what she had to do, so she made a basket. She wove sticks together. The Bible says in verse 3 that she covered it in tar and pitch. Tar, like it's a salient, so it would like make the basket float. But I need this morning for you to understand in our last chapel for the year, you need to understand that next one. Pitch, P-I-T-C-H. What is pitch? To explain this, let me take you to my house. I live in Texas, Dallas, Texas, and go Cowboys. And uh, uh-uh, don't you boo, don't you boo. I will come, up. I'm gonna come off this stage. I have an English bulldog, his name is Duke. Duke has his own attitude, does his own thing, lives by his own life, eats when he wants, doesn't eat when he don't want. But you know what Duke has, an, he's an artist. I don't know if anybody here is in the art department, my dog Duke can come and be in your class. Cause Duke can make the most beautiful pyramids in my front yard you've ever seen in your entire life. Those pyramids, that's pitch. So she covered this basket with tar and pitch. And pitch is poop. And then she put her baby in the basket. No wonder that baby was crying. Now I know some of you are looking at me like, what is your point? Here's my point, and I'm gonna tell you right now. Some of you need to understand, if you were here on Wednesday and you took notes, just turn your page back and look at them. Cause my friend that preached on Wednesday, I'm finishing what he started today. You gotta understand something. Not a person in this room that doesn't have pitch in their life. Not a person in this room that hasn't gone through a situation that smelled bad, looked bad, and you thought it would make you be bad. But I am here to tell you right now, no matter what pitch you're in, if you let him, Jesus will open the lid to your life and he'll pull you out of the pitch that you thought was meant to kill you. Oh, thank you, all 30 of you. You have to understand what you thought was meant to kill you has been made to save you. 
If you do not know the pitch you've been through and you do not know the God who can save you from it, then why would you serve him? If God raised Jesus from the dead 25 seconds after he died, where would the miracle be? And if God saved us from our pitch 10 seconds after we smelled it, where would our salvation be? It's the stuff that he saves us from that matters. Because where would I be without the Lord on my side? Is there anybody who understand me? Say amen. amen. Listen to me very carefully. What I love is this. If they had just put that boy whose name is Moses in a regular basket, first the basket would have sank and he would have drowned and the people of Israel would never been set free. If she had just used tar and not pitch, then those animals that lived in the Nile would have smelled the baby in the basket, ripped it apart and eat him. But the pitch was actually saving the baby from the few. The pitch is actually saving you because the day comes when you realize that your past is your history, but your futures is your destiny. The day comes when you realize that yesterday happened and it ain't nothing but a step in getting closer to God. When you realize that no matter how you used to smell, God is better than Clorox bleach, y'all. God smells better than Fabuloso. That purple stuff smell good. And those of you who know, you got a Spanish mama. I'm just going to keep going. But are you willing to let him take care of you? This is a good sermon in the end because the devil has plans for some of you this summer. But what the devil don't know is you're taking Jesus with you. It is time for us to move forward, not look back. Make an effort. If you are an underclassman, make an effort right now. Decide today, I am going to be the same. I'm not going to have to go back in my life when I get here in August. I'm going to be better Christian. I'm going to be stronger in the Lord. I'm going to do my devotions. I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to say bye-bye to those people who I know are going to mess me up. Listen to me. You need to let that girl go. I'm sorry. And girl, he don't love you. He only going to love you next week because he know you back home. I'm messing, ain't I? But that's what Uncle Reggie does. In the Bible, in the book of John chapter 11, it's one of my favorite stories. It's a story of a man named Lazarus. I love this story. Because Lazarus was dead four days and Jesus came and brought him back to life again. What I love about Lazarus is this. There's two things. First of all, y'all too young, you wouldn't remember, but there's an old school Christian music man by the one name he called Carmen. <laughs> it's one of my favorite songs he wrote about Lazarus and I got time. Instead of me going, uh, I could read it in the Bible, but I got a couple of verses I will. But can I give you the lyrics to Carmen? His, all right, all right, all right. So everybody, touch your neighbor and say, here we go. Touch your other neighbor and say, it's about to go down. Here's in the words of my, yeah, Carmen, he was great. He said this. I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. A certain man had died in the town of Bethany, and Lazarus was his name. The Bible says he was a man that Jesus loved, and his sisters thought it was a shame. Now Mary and Martha longed for Jesus' healing touch, to come and touch their brother because they loved that boy so much. But God had a plan not known to any man that would soon wipe away their tears. They were waiting for Jesus to come and say, Lazarus, come forth. When he died, he did go to where the saints of God did stay. In a holding place, they lived beyond the tomb. There he saw Elijah, Moses, Samuel, even Ruth, and they were all jammed up in a room. He turned around and saw old Gideon standing by the door. He said, yo, bro, what's this meeting for? Gideon said, well, all right, it's testimony night. Grab a seat, little brother, because the show's about to start soon. 
while Mary and Martha was longing to hear Lazarus come forth. Moses shook his stick and said, this meeting come to order. Can I get a testimony for the Lord? Abraham kicked it off and said, hey man, I knew him. He gave a child to my barren wife. Isaac waved his hand and said, hey daddy, I knew him too. Jacob jumped up and said, amen, grandpa, preach it. Dignified Solomon adjusted his robe and said, I knew him. He made me so smart, I started to teach it. Ezekiel said, I knew him as a will within the will. Job said, man, he healed me when I was almost dead. Samson said, I knew him. And, a, and, a, and when some Philistines tried to jump me, I took a donkey jawbone and I busted a few heads. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we knew him in a fiery furnace. Jonah said, oh, he gave me a second chance. Daniel cried, I knew him in a hungry den of lions. The Holy Ghost hit King David. That brother just started to dance. Needless to say, the room got quiet when Lazarus said, Hey, y'all, I knew him too. But I knew him in a way y'all never did. Moses shook his stick and said, who's the new kid? But the room got quiet when he said this. You see, I walked with him and talked with him. I heard him preach to the thousands. Those famous tears of compassion, I could actually see. I watched him confront the Pharisees. He came to my house for dinner. The one thing I remember is the simple loving way he called my name. Up at the tomb, the stone rolled away and in a loud voice, Jesus started to say, Lazarus. He said, matter of fact, it's just like yesterday, I could hear that brother saying my Lazarus. Matter of fact, it sounds like today, I could hear that brother, Lazarus, Jesus, come forth. The Bible says in John 11, verse 33, when Jesus saw them weeping, you see, Mary and Martha, Martha went to see Jesus, but Mary stayed at home. Then finally, Martha went back and said, he's calling you. And when Mary showed up and fell at Jesus' feet around verse 33 in John chapter 11, it, it, Jesus was moved because she was crying. The Jews that came with her were crying. They were all weeping and Jesus was moved. And in verse 34, he said, where have you laid his body? And they said, come and see. Verse 35 in John chapter 11, verse 35 is my favorite verse. When I was a little boy, I grew up in an Assembly of God church. They had a boy scouting program called Royal Rangers. And all I wanted was that patch. I wanted to get my patch, but I had to memorize scripture to get my patch. The first scripture I memorized was John 11, 35. Why? Not because it was deep, not because it moved me, not because I cared about it, but because it was two words. And those two words simply said, Jesus wept. But as I got older, I started learning something. And today, oh, are you in your last chapel, I want you to hear this. If Jesus wept then, he weeps now. If he cared then, he cares now. Some of you are like, well, I know this story. Then why did it take four days for Jesus to show up? Listen to me, little brother. His ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. That's why there's pitch in life. You don't know until you get to the other side why you had to go through it, why you had to smell it, why it had to get on your life. But if you just hold on to Jesus through the smelly part, when you get to the other side, oh, fabuloso. Jesus is going to be there to take care of you. In case you're brand new, I grew up in foster care my entire life. My mom slept with a man for $20. She kept my brother, his name's Keith, my two sisters, Anna and Jeanette, but she gave me away because she said I was a mistake. That's my pitch. But guess who was there the whole time? Jesus. And if he could do it for me, he could do it for you. You don't have to stink by August. You can still smell good you got to fight. You got to fight. Verse 36, then the Jews said, hey, see how he loved him? Verse 37 says, but some of them said he opened the eyes of the blind, but he couldn't keep this man from dying. I hate people like that. Then Jesus once more moved deeply, came to the tomb and he said, take away the stone. Martha said, don't move the rock. There is a bad odor now. I love the King James. The King James says, she said, don't move the rock, he stinketh. <laughs> a 
listen, I don't need to go into this, but just in case, we or some of you have smelled some bad things because of your roommate this whole year. Some of you have literally thought to yourself, I'm going to die. <laughs> but look at me. No matter what the smell was, you did not have a TH on the end of it, did you? Because listen, stuff can smell, stuff can be nasty, stuff can stink. But when you say stinketh, it's a smell that can mess you up for the rest of your life. Your nose hair will fall out and never grow again. You'll lose the hair on the top of your head. Not that I've smelled this before, but I'm just saying. It could be nasty, nasty, nasty. Some of you, your past stinketh. Some of you, what you've been through stinketh. But guess what? Jesus is about to call your name. He's about to call you out. Some of you, he's called you out this semester. Some of you, he's called you out since you've been at ORU. Never forget that he's changed you. Because what he started, he'll finish. Somebody say amen. amen. If you know what I'm talking about, for five seconds, give Jesus a hand clap because this is true. The Bible says, even though she said, don't move the rock, he stinketh, she let him move the rock. Hey, look at me, let him move the rock. Let him move the rock. Because if he hadn't left you, he won't leave you. At the very end in verse 44, it said, the dead man came out, hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen and a cloth over his face. Jesus said, take off the grave clothes and let him go. For you see, and you see for all the seniors in the room, we've taken off the grave clothes. Now it's time for you to fly. Change this world, seniors. Change this world. Those of you who are underclassmen, change the world. You're not alone. Because we're in this thing together. 1148. And I closed my iPad. I got one last thing to do. Ain't nothing wrong with being scared. Because usually when you're scared, you take care of business. Usually when you're scared, you make sure you don't make mistakes. But some of you, that, that pitch, your past, in the book of Jude, it says that run from sin because it stinks to high heaven, the message says. But some of you can smell your sin coming after you, coming back. But I'm here to tell you in Jesus' name, you got people praying for you. Some of you got roommates praying for you, people beside you praying for you. But what do you say let's take care of that before you leave the room? I'm gonna count from five to zero. When I get to zero, whoever's standing, this is why you're standing. Because you're like, Reggie, I love God, I love him, I know what he's done in my life, but I'm scared. I don't wanna go back to the one I used to be. I don't wanna go back to where I used to be. Or are you saying, Reggie, I need this, I need this. Reggie, I kinda starting to smell again. I know my mind is going, just like he said on Wednesday, it is not the birds that fly over, it's the one that you let land and make a nest. Reggie, I'm starting to let sin make a nest in my mind. So either you're afraid you're going to go back or you're afraid it's coming back. Not today. Some of you are like, why do you have people move all the time? Because here's why I believe in prayer is spiritual and we're going to pray for you. Moving is physical. When you do something spiritual and physical together, it opens the door for the supernatural to happen in your life. Don't be afraid of an altar call. And if you need to move, move. I've answered all to cause my whole life. One time a famous preacher was preaching and he hit me right in between the eyes. And I was sitting on the platform with the other pastors. He gave an altar call. I walked down the steps, turned around, went to the altar and knelt down. Why? Because I needed prayer. I could care less what people think. I don't want to smell no more. So what do you say? Let's do this before we go in our last chapel. You got five seconds. You're either afraid the stinky coming back or you're in the middle of the stink or the stink is starting again. Say, wow, I got it. We're not going to bow our heads. Shut up, you big baby. 
You don't need to bow your head, close your eyes. You're in Monk's family, dude. Matter of fact, you got sweet mates who already know you nasty. So why don't you just help them, let them pray for you. Y'all ready? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Some of you are like, wait a minute, you just said stand. You didn't say come forward. No, because guess what? We family. Our president's going to come and close in prayer. But for the next 30 seconds, are you ready? Don't let your friends stand alone. Don't let your friends stand by themselves. You may not even know them, but don't let nobody, even in the balcony, be alone. Get up right now and put your hands on somebody. For the next 30 seconds, let the song be our voices crying out for our friends. You ready? Come on, pray, 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 pray. And I lift my hands, I lay my whole life down, my whole life down for you. And I lift my hands, I lay my whole life down, my whole life now. Come on, lift your voice, you. lift your voice, lift your and voice I for your friend. Come on. Come on, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Don't be bashful, for pray for him. Pray for them. Back hell up. Back hell up today. Thank you, Lord. Don't you dare leave this semester. Seniors, don't leave this university without things being right with God. Don't go into this summer without things right with heaven. And if you're a senior here, we love you. Jesus is going to go with you. Make sure he goes with you the rest of your life. Everybody raise your hands all over this room. Father, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Lord, that the things that seem so terrible in our lives many times are the things that are delivering us to our destiny. Let us hang on to you and trust you, God, your providence, your provision, your work. And let us hear your voice, Lord, and come out of those things that have brought death to us. Unravel, Lord, the grave clothes around us. Free our minds, our spirits, our bodies, our lives to serve you fully. Free us up, Lord. Set us free. So 
that we walk out of death into a glorious life with you. I pray for every, every student in this room over this next few days. Let it be a, a time of connection with heaven and love with one another. I praise you, God. I thank you for your blessings today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give God thanks for the ministry of Reggie Dabbs. Thank you, Reggie. This has been a presentation of Oral Roberts University, a world-renowned and fully accredited Christian university with more than 100 undergraduate majors and minors, as well as graduate degrees in business, education, and theology. If you or someone you know is thinking about college, but not sure what to expect, then visit us for one of our Quest Leadership events. Join us for this action-packed, fun-filled, spirit-empowered experience at ORU. Visit classes, attend a Golden Eagle sporting event, worship in chapel, and meet new friends. Want to advance your career but can't move to Tulsa? Then ORU has what you need with convenient online undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Don't wait. You can experience ORU's unique whole person approach to learning and graduate empowered to succeed. Visit us today at ORU.edu.